playing when all your Warriors Valor, all your uh, whatever go again cards are actually hitting. Mm -hmm. um, so what the Dynamos could provide is four to five to six life over the course of the game that allows, like the, in that Briar matchup that we saw at the end, you know, imagine if the Briar had six more life. Yep. Right? And how much, how much different that match would have played out because he could have taken some damage, kept a full grip, and then really... Yep, I agree. Right? And how maybe maybe that's the, the point of it. But we'll see. I agree. Yeah, it's also worth noting that uh, a lot of Dorinthia's cards do block for three, so that fourth block can be enough to prevent that Frostbite token from Winter's Whale. Absolutely. All right, and here we see the domination from Ironsong Determination, the potential on hit from Warrior's Valor. So this Dawnblade uh, coming in strong right now for five. Unfortunately, five is about the weakest number he can be coming in for because of Rampart plus three block plus crown. But um, this does still turn on Reprise, so I'm going to assume he has some sort of effect in hand to, to trigger the Reprise. Yeah. Yeah, pitching Glint the Quicksilver usually um, implies that you've got something, but it looks like that's just going to Arsenal. Interesting. Great move uh, playing the Rampart as well. It really allows for uh, some flexibility on the on the hands. And then Crown of Seas as well allows you to block you know, straight up and then be able to uh, account for like a, a singing steel blade or something of that nature. Right. This is yeah, a yellow autumn coming stuff. in now for yeah, it's eight dominate and go again. And then and, uh, the Quinn Qu Qu will have to. Does he come in with the Winter's Whale pitching the ice card, or is he just going to leave it in Arsenal for Crown of Seeds? Looks like we're taking some damage here. Uh oh, that means Josh has got something to hit back with. Either that or he wants to block the Winner's Whale. But he would have saved the Dynamo for that, I would assume. Unless he yeah. had a sink. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, yep. Defense reaction. If I was a betting man, that card in Arsenal is a Steel Blade shunt, and he's going to wait till Tunic counter number three. <laughs> I, think you're, I, I think your your betting mindset is going to be correct. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we have a go again source somewhere here obviously because uh he doesn't have access to bolters so maybe it is a glint okay yeah yeah, yeah and so he's pitched two glints and then he just uh had his third there so that is uh, quite the draw yeah um five looking a whole lot better without a uh, arsenal on uh his opponent's side of the board okay yeah the draw so he's gonna activate bracers which means Coming in for six, right? Uh, yeah, it'll be six, and it's also important to note that that basically uh, makes Bravo safe from overpower, uh, because you're just blankly admitting that you don't need the pitch. Uh, you still have to account for route with two floating, um, but it just depends on uh, if he didn't block the first. Uh, I don't imagine he's blocking the second. <laughs> yeah, and if he is, then then I feel like that's a missed opportunity to block on the first and try to get the cards out of Josh's hand. Yeah, because if the Warriors glance, right, and you block the first, yep. you still prevent a card draw either way, so it's a net neutral, right? Because yep. they're they're just getting the card off a of glint instead of supremacy. So. And if he wasn't able to uh, get over the, the block, if he had nothing to get over the block, then he doesn't get to attack second and he doesn't get his dynamo counter off. Yeah. But the fact it's taking this long probably means that he has the fuse. For sure. I don't know. I don't know if he's trying. If this is the turn where he's going to iron hide legs, crater, rampart, and <laughs> crown. I mean, that's cover six, and it only cost a blue. So, um, would be a strong play. He doesn't he doesn't have there. the crown. Oh yeah, you're right. Yep. So yep, uh, yep. he would he, he would have to give tunic, and that's not gonna happen. This early. Yep. He'd have to give a card plus another card to pitch for the rampart. Of... Looks like he's just gonna give oh, him wow. the fuse. He just gave him the fuse. He said, "Here oh. you." 
<laughs> that's all only, right. Keep in mind, that's only for seven. So if Josh has any sort of reprise card in hand, then that could have been real bad. It was a gamble, but I mean, at the same time, if his if his attack was like a blue autumn's touch, right, then it's definitely not worth it. The go again plus two dominate because the dominate doesn't matter, right? Because nobody's blocking the blue autumn's touch. Um, but there it goes. I mean, already dynamos have provided two health, right? Yep. yep. So we we can just keep a counter going and say, okay, at the end of the game, if he had X less health. How would it be a lot different? And we can really gauge the difference between those refraction bolters and uh, dynamos. No, I think you made the right assessment. Um, throughout the course of this game, jo I mean, uh, his opponent is not blocking much. Um, so the, I think the dynamo is going to do quite a lot of work. Uh, what is this, slice and dice? So that's first one gets plus one, second one gets plus three? Yes. Uh, um, however... No go against at the moment. Yeah, and we've seen all three Glint the Quicksilvers, so... Uh, are there any other attack action cards that can give that go again? Um, Blade Runner? Yeah, Blade Runner. Blade Runner only works on one-handed weapons, though, doesn't it? Does it? Or am I wrong? I don't know. You, you, I think you're right. I think it is one-handed weapons. Yeah, it looks no, like I... that slice and dice was uh, just the slice. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it was the infamous, you know, Dory pitches a red to swing the sword. Like, she has nothing. Right. Yeah, and that's, Blade that, Runner is one handed, by the way. It is one handed. Okay. Yeah. That's good to know. So, the answer there was uh, seeing Steel Blade was the only card um, because it could have fetched the other glints. Mm -hmm. Right. But that requires reprise. Yeah. So. yeah and uh, Shane or Quinn chose not to block with cards from hand here. Right. It looks like we do not have a fuse. Good news for Josh. Yep. Typically, the Bravo players waste zero time slapping those cards down, <laughs> pulling that hero up. Yeah, just coming in here with the Winter's Whale. Uh, it will be frosty on hit, so... This is the only downside that... of a Starvo. When you don't have the triggered ability, your attacks are usually pretty mediocre. Mm -hmm. Now... Oh, who called it? Who I don't know. He, it? Already, he already used the arsenal card. He He's already pulled a... that last hand. So, oh, you, it's you the were... same. It still it... works. <laughs> <laughs> I knew y'all were going to say over. something, so I kept that in mind. Well, I, I uh, call carry over. <laughs> it hit and runs another go again card, by the way. Yep, sure is. However, the plus one on the blue variety does not apply here because it is only the first swing. Yeah, hit and run, uh, definitely signaling that go again. You're not hiding it in your hand. Right. Bravo just does not like blocking, so if your Dawn Blades keep hitting, you're pretty happy. So, whoa. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, this triggers reprise, but... Oh, uh, that was from Arsenal. That was from Arsenal. Oh, this, this never mind is, then. This turn is over. <laughs> this, yeah, this one's a done deal. Yeah. Actually, route here is really oh, good. If, if he had a route, that would be because pretty good. Because then he has to pay for it again. Like, that's pretty good. That would be really good. And then the second time he paid for it, it would trigger a press. Uh, mm -hmm. Although, I, I do find it interesting that he didn't use the extra resource to Rampart. Well, does route... Is route the reprise effect? Is that the bounce? Does it get plus three? Correct. So oh, you're right. Go, yeah, yeah, so, so he wouldn't have gotten the bounce. Yep. yep. Pulse of Candle Hold and Winter's Bite. Pulse of Candle Hold being one of the best pulses you can keep in your hand since the ice count is typically the highest count in the deck. Yep. Blue yeah, though, here it is, just an evergreen, so similar to the Blue Autumn's Touch, it's only coming in for 7 Dominate Go again. Yep. Yep. And so that just means that if Josh has any type of a hand here, we will just see a... Uh, and Candle Hold's the only card in hand, so he'll just throw Dynamos in front of it and call it a day. If, yep. um, if he has a good hand, but if he has a bad hand, he'll be more than willing to, uh, to give a card here. 
And uh, you guys think about that staunch response. Let's talk about that for a second. Um, Bravo respecting Dorinthia and playing uh, playing staunch responses into this matchup by and also reducing the amount of times he's going to be fusing throughout the game uh, by doing so. I mean, I think it's definitely the correct play if yeah. the Dory player is on Dawnblade. But if you're against the Axis, it's, then you, yeah, it's very cards. bad. Yeah. Very bad. <laughs> yep. Getting four block out of this means he probably... Um, yeah, because he knew he knew he wasn't going to be able to swing with the hammer because of the pulse. Ar right. Arsenaling the pulse, that's interesting. Yeah, I think it's a choice, uh, choosing to keep it in hand for the potential more aggression or being able to use Crown of Seeds. Uh, here we have a very powerful turn coming in. Go again, slice and, uh, from Spoils of War, slice and dice. So this might be a time where actually being able to block with more cards for Starvo is worth it. Yep. And depending on what that Arsenal card is, this could be, uh, be a pretty good turn. You mean that uh, Steel Blade Shunt? <laughs> <laughs> Or this time, I think it might be the Singing Steel Blade that might have been signaled earlier. Definitely could be. Definitely could be. How about the zero cost plus three? Uh, be... Iron Song response? Re response, yeah. That card would be really good right here. Get him up to nine so that the next sword swing comes in for a lot and still have the one resource to pay for it. Mm -hmm. That would be really, really good right here. I'm ready to see. I'm ready to see a dice. We've seen the slice, but we have not seen the dice yet. Well, he's basically admitting he has a D react. Yep, because he's That's... yeah. So staunch response and the shield blocking for eight. You can still get over by one with a. Plus All right. Two. Is it the response? But he's got crown of seeds active, so it, it won't matter. It won't matter. Yeah, but it's a whole other card. Oh yeah, absolutely. But do you do it? No. Looks no. like not. That's, uh, the first one was a blue staunch, wasn't it? No, they were both red. Are they both red? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, two staunches out of the way. Still a pretty even life total, even game. So this game is, uh, I think this game is going the way that Josh wants it to go at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, nice keeping life goals as close makes it so that Awakening is not going to be nearly as powerful. For sure. Josh also not getting um, not getting his counter off the dynamo that turn. He'll have his tunic counter up um, for another shunt coming up for next turn. So the shunt right now would be really awkward for him. There's a chance he just doesn't care about the frostbite right now, though, if he's got a decent hand. Yeah, because in a lot of a lot of instances, it's just going to be the difference of does he activate Bridge Four Bracers or not? Exactly. Yeah, on the and hand. he will have his tunic. Right. Yep. Yeah, I don't think he's going to care about the frostbite. It's whether he can use his entire hand next turn is what he's probably deciding. And we are seeing uh, at least one card block. And he's taking the one damage, still getting the frostbite, but just deciding that card wasn't coming out anyway. Yellow Warrior's Valor. Sharp of Steel. This is for eight, I believe. That's eight. Still has one yes. floating, I believe. Or no, he paid two and then one, so he had nothing floating at the moment other than the tunic counter. Yeah, that tunic because, counter uh... is still... Uh... Oh, it's Get a very lot of relevant. Out of Arsenal. Very relevant. And if that card is what we think, like what I was calling last turn, um, then the same threat is being posed at the moment. Except this one gets over uh, um, <laughs> over the defense reaction this time. We haven't seen any turn timbers. You think uh, you think he's running those soon? No. Nah. No, I don't think so. Unless he's playing. Um, was Michael Hamilton playing Turn Timbers? Uh, 
Uh, I, no, it was actually sink below, believe it or not. Okay, so that's that's would be my decision, would, or my guess would be that uh, it's right. like a sink below. Because sink blows are actually yeah, quite good in the deck. They actually represent a crown of seeds effect, which is pretty relevant. Right. This does look very different, though, from the Michael Hamilton list. A uh, lot of cards that mm -hmm. I'm not seeing that would indicate yep. he's following that strategy. Yep. Yeah, we haven't seen any of like glacial footsteps or anything like that. Yeah, he looks like he's on more of the uh, the, Oof. the casino variety. Uh, that's eight right there. So if this is a uh, if this card in Arsenal, nope. Dang. That's a steel blade shunt then. I think we pegged it now. I'm gonna use that shunt right now on this weapon. All right, it looks like Quinn did did have uh, the fuse for Bravo. Chose to block out instead and just coming in with the Winter's Whale. Yeah, he's playing more conservatively. Doesn't want Josh getting any of uh any of that advantage from his uh, Don Blade counter. Mm hmm. One thing I'm noticing, uh, the stack pitching is really good on Starvo and and do you think maybe he's just trying to run Dory out of threats and yeah. then on the second rotation just start fusing just nonstop and try to close it out that way? It's kind of seeing Yeah, that is a strategy. Uh it looks like Dory has uh or Josh has forty one cards in his deck. Uh Quinn has fifty one right now, so yeah, There's it's still a, a lot very to go with problem. Though. Very, very real problem. Um, running out of cards. There's a hard to find. All that's gonna gain him a life if he's behind, right? She is. Yeah. Okay. We got another slice and dice. This is what plus one to the first one, plus two to the next one for yellow, I believe. Um. So. Yeah. Another pretty threatening so three attack. Three plus four coming in. Yep. I'm still got that arsenal card. I'm going to talk to him after the game, but I don't know how I feel about Slice and Dice. Kind of like an all-or-nothing card, you know? Yeah, it hasn't been doing anything on the most powerful effect yet. Like Andy said, it's just been Slice and no Dice. Yep. Yeah. Well, took some damage there, at least. Got, got a hit through. But even then, the Slice and Dice did plus one. <laughs> well, that so. basically means he has an Oaken old, right? Uh, I mean, it's something. And well, we got it's, that fuse. And it's, hey. it's, de it's definitely not a regular fuse. Yeah, F4 yeah, those are all blue. Yeah, this is an old five or tall one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you <laughs> saw it. <laughs> yeah. For sure, an oak and old. Oh, yep. All right, so here we have uh, nine, um, Dominate and Go again. Eleven. Yep. And if it hits... Then it's two cards at random in the bottom of Josh's deck at the order of Josh's choosing. Show us the steel blade shine the arsenal. <laughs> I don't know if that would even matter right now. Oh, probably not. Yeah, I'm not <laughs> right. <laughs> well, he still played his shunt. Seen, he uh, he shunted from hand. Shunt so far. He, he shunted from hand with this card in arsenal, so I don't think it's yeah, shunt. if it was if it was two, that's exactly what you'd do, right? Well, you would shunt from arsenal instead of from hand, right? If you were using just one shunt. Why? Just to replace it? Yeah. But it's the same effect. It's not like you're worried about Starvo having a barrage. Well, no, it just... I mean, there's no reason not... I mean, like... I don't know. It feels like it keeps a, a more of a guessing game I mean, for, that's for your opponent. Yeah, yeah that's true. When you're cycling your arsenal, but but yeah, I don't know if he's gonna just choose to yeah, take was... most of this here, or Still this is shot. this is the card that's gonna hurt Josh the most in this matchup for sure. Yeah, in general, you have the choice: do you try and block, save yourself some life, or do you just say, "I'll take two cards in my hand and I'll see what I can do next turn." Oh, well, the five here think makes me think he has shunt. Yeah. Oh, you know it. Really debating. Yeah, it's so a perfect. So either doing a good bluff. Look oh, yeah, that. it's red. Right. Perfect block for eleven. Look at that. Bang.
So we've seen shunts of all of all recaps coming in uh, on Josh's deck. So that is a heavy devotion to those defense reactions. But being able to pull this on the Oak and Old looks like it's been worth it. And Josh over here just saying, I'll write off my next turn. I'll put this card in Arsenal. I don't care about that Frostbite. And that's kind of a scary thing to to see a Red Warrior's Valor go in front of that Icy Hammer. Yes, yes. Because, because, I was thinking the same thing. Yeah, because you're like, what other card would you rather have in Arsenal? It's got to be like a Supremacy like, or something. It's, got, it's either that, a Twinning Blade, uh, you know... Uh, spoils of war i mean there's not a lot of cards that are better than a red warrior's valor so Absolutely. hopefully hopefully the starvo player you know saw that and you know because that, that scared the crap out of me <laughs> i was thinking the same thing it's two actually a yellow one and a red one hit the bin that turn yeah mm -hmm. Yeah, Warrior's Valor, one of those cards, uh, if you've been playing Blitz a lot, not as powerful in Kasai, very powerful for Dorinthia. Because uh, oh, yeah. Dorinthia, you need to hit that on hit on the first weapon, so it's either the go again's worth it or it's not. Josh's opponent here with a five card hand. Looks like he's not fusing because he hasn't slapped it down on the table. Um, that's really good news after after blocking out an Oak and Old, because you don't want them to just keep keep smacking you in the face with those over and over again. That's when you lose the game. I haven't seen a channel lake here, so like maybe maybe channel here would be pretty pretty alright. Possible he pitched one earlier in the game. Um can't I mean, quite remember. He has to be running him simply because his eyes three block. Oh yeah, you sure. you you don't play this deck without channel lake, that's for right. sure. And if you do, I'll I'll say this bar none you're wrong. Because <laughs> <laughs> I have for sure seen Icy Encounter in his deck. Um, uh, I can think of an easy replacement if there's no channel likes in the deck. But yeah, I don't know why his opponent's thinking a long time about this turn here. If uh, if you have channel lake in the in the hand, then that's for sure coming out. It looks like that to a hammer. Yep. I mean. Oh, oh, well, oh, we're you seeing what? Channel Lake coming oh, he's got, he's into got that pummel? pitch zone. We got a pummel coming? What is this? Well, right here, this is coming in for eight with the Frostbite. For sure. Well, the, the Vault Haven was, was, from, was from Arsenal, correct? Every, it was a five card hand. He, uh, he cracked. Uh, yeah, yeah. So he doesn't have an earth card in hand. Okay, so what this is, what this is saying is that he has the fuse. Just no attack. Just no attack. Yep. That that's what it's saying because I mean, literally any other play would be better if that wasn't the case. Mm -hmm. Josh knows this is probably either pummel or this is what he's got. I mean, you don't even care about the pummel here because it's not discarding card. That's, that's true, right. but. If he if he tries to block around and gets pummeled and the frostbite messes him up, that could be uh, an issue. But damage damage is yeah. going to start to be a problem. At eight, I think it's either you give him the whole hand or nothing kind of thing because oh, yeah, can't with, do nothing with one with one card. With life being so close now, there's no reason for him not to just keep his hand here. Got the tunic counter too, so he can play around the frostbite easily. It's really important that Josh has a big turn here because you know that he, the hey. Starman player has the fuse. So. Hey, Warrior's Valor. Yeah, that's why he blocked with it because he had another one. <laughs> <laughs> I like that card. <laughs> we have not seen a single reprise re uh, reaction yet, have we? We've seen a glint for just go again. That is it. That is the that, only that's it. Sweet. Yeah. Ooh, nature's path plus warrior's valor. Which one is this one? Is this plus three? Holy oh, shit! <laughs> All right. Somehow. He said block this. So that's uh, coming that's in for ten. three, three, one. That's seven plus three is ten. The next one's gonna come in for six, I believe. With uh, if he uses brave forge, then it'll be seven. Yeah, it'd be seven with the brave. Even with a full hand, 10 can be difficult to block sometimes with all the twos in your hand. 
He could get there with crown yeah. and armor if he wants to. Oh, which for I'm sure. pretty sure he will. Because uh, nature path is the extra swing, right? Uh, let's see. Or is that the if arsenal? It hits and you have no cards in your arsenal, reveal the top card of your deck. If it's an action card, put it face down in your arsenal. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah, you can't let that hit, right? Oh, his opponent has awakening pitching that, so he's definitely committing to blocking. Crown ramp. Let's see, he needs to block 10. So he's got eight more to go. Two three blocks and a two block in hand, or two three blocks and a yeah, two, two three armor. Block in hide, so, or just give it Ooh. all. That works. All right. that, would, that would be 10. Yeah. Herein lies one of the problems with Marinthia. Yeah, so here uh, we're trading uh, three cards for three cards, basically. Yeah, right. Now, in there was a crushing crush, but we saw that awakening get attack. pitched. No, it looks like that's just going into Arsenal. Yeah, looks like he's uh, committing to a kind of a burnout plan. Anytime Josh represents something, he's blocking. Anytime he doesn't represent something, then he's uh, able to attack back. How many defense reactions and uh, that Josh is playing right now? It's highly likely after that that turn of three cards, three really good cards. Um, this hand is going to be pretty medium. Yeah, though we've still only seen uh, one, I believe, Iron Song determination and one uh, steel supremacy. supremacy. That's the one. Though there's, there's number the two one. in the pitch zone. Yep. The infamous pitch red. <laughs> <laughs> Swing for three. Yep. There goes another awakening. Yeah, it looks like uh, Quinn is committing to not awakening. Unless he got the three instants in two turns. Man, he could, he could have taken the three, played awakening, got two seismic surge tokens. <laughs> Talk about value. Would have gotten one seismic surge. Oh, if he fused it, be two. <laughs> what you gonna get with yeah, two? It looks like he did take two damage counter. right there, so uh -oh. <laughs> you can't get icy encounter. Like, oh yeah, it's not a guardian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you literally can't get anything. You can't get anything. <laughs> oh, there's a fuse. Oh, Look there's at that. The two cards. Yeah, pulse of Eisenloft, uh, the defense reaction, oh. and an open old, which uh, oh, will also get that full fuse. What a monster! So that's eleven. Dominate and go again. But since Josh was... only represented a three attack, there's a high probability he has some sort of defense reaction. Uh, whether he can block 11, though, uh, that's another problem. Yeah, it has been a long time since those Valiant Dom Dynamos have lost their counter. Yeah. They've been out of commission for a while. And the uh, skull cap is not enabled right now with both players at the same life total. He does have tunic counter for the shunt though, which will help mm -hmm. if he has it. How many red shunts have we seen? Just the one, or We've I seen think one it's of just each the color. one. What, one yeah. of each. You know, there's three of those bad boys in the deck. Yeah, you can almost guarantee that there's at least one or two blues and at least three reds because you would always maximize the red before you put in a yellow. Okay, so the five block here means there's a red shunt in his hand. That's it. Or from Arsenal with the tunic counter. Yep. Look at. I tell you what, it's like I know something. Bang. Yeah, that is the second uh, red shunt into the Oak and Old. And it looks like Quinn is coming in for uh, just another attack afterwards. Four from oh. Arsenal with Go again. Look at that. That's spicy. Was that in Arsenal? Yeah. I think the Oak and Old was from Arsenal. I think this is from hand. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. it looked yeah. like it came with the flip, but I could have been wrong. Oh, I'm almost I, certain I, I it's from a hand. Okay. Well, he definitely doesn't want to pitch the uh, pulse for ice. Right. Hammer, exactly. Yeah. Four damage is four damage right now. But then again, if that was the case, if he was intended on keeping the pulse in hand, he would probably just arsenal the lightning surge. 
Uh, no, I think that actually was from Arsenal. I think so. Yeah. Looking in my stream. Yeah, I think so. Hmm. I thought for sure he flipped that Okanold out of Arsenal. Give him three, take one. Turn on skull cap. Oh. Yep. oh. Look at that. He said you are not going to turn. Once again, important thing to note. He blocked with his spoils of war. So what's going in Arsenal? That's a good one. That's a good one. Josh says you can have this frostbite back. This is going into Arsenal. I really like oh. Quinn's strategy though here. Like, okay, I'll just block unless I have a fused oak and old. <laughs> yeah, really, I mean, it, it's really working because I guarantee if you look at the deck count, he's probably up 20 cards. Oh, it's a lot. I'll look at the deck 41, count. 41 it's to a... 28. It's what? Yeah. 41 to 28. 41 to 28. Oh, wow. So 13 cards. So, I mean, that's, yeah, that's just huge, right? Now, granted, card per card, the Dory probably wins that value, but I mean, that's 13 cards. That, no, that... he hasn't played a single crippling crush. That's he hasn't right. Played he's, a blocked single... one. he's blocked one. He's blocked with one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he still has one Oak and Old and two crippling crushes left in the deck, which are just. Yeah, and he's not I mean, playing. And he not... always he always has a. Uh... Pulse of Candle Hold to get two Okanolds back. So, yeah, yeah and who so knows rough. what he's been uh, hiding under his deck with a crown of, she of seeds? There right. might be pulverizes we just haven't seen. Yep. Yeah, both of his awakenings are on the bottom, which is uh, good for Josh. Is that just a seven evergreen, or did he? Fuse it is. It? it is just seven. Yep. <laughs> just seven. Yeah. Seven being uh, not a number just to laugh at, but yeah. still with the on-hit effects. When you're comparing it to 11 go again into Ice Hammer. Yeah, it's <laughs> just seven. <laughs> it's just seven. Oh. I love Josh's uh, Doge icon, though, because it's like very... <laughs> it, it, like, it just reminds <laughs> me of him playing Durantia so much. <laughs> Staring at his opponent. Oh, this evergreen. I, I think. One? I Go think ahead. the biggest thing uh, to really get a gauge on who's winning this matchup is found on the equipment, and really uh, seeing who's who's tapped into it and who hasn't. Mm -hmm. I think we can yeah, uh, very clearly see. The chain has been able to keep his stuff steady. Yep, hasn't needed to uh, to tap into that Ironhide boots or the Crater Fist yet. Still has a Rampart that's never going away. Unless uh, Josh is running one of those, what what is it, Shatter? Yes. He definitely could be running Shatter. Oof. Yeah, choosing to block uh, six over here, taking one. Get rid of a red iron saw. Run for six. Okay. I like that play, though, because if he kept the iron saw response, right, there's a good chance it's a dead card, and he has to, you know, he just only draws three. Yep. So, definitely correct. Taking a look at his discard pile over there, seeing what he has left in his deck. Yeah, he's got to make sure that um, those threats he was stacking earlier, like that Steel Blade Supremacy, and there's a few other key, like Glint, the Quicksilver. Um, yeah, we saw him few, pitch those early. Yeah, a few key cards he pitched early. I'm sure he's looking forward to getting on the on the cycle number two. Oh, Ooh, and there's, we have a turn timber. there's your turn, Timber. There you go. So that opens up uh, a few more defense reaction possibilities from the Starvo player. Keeping that turn timber hidden until now, we, you know, you could have thought he was only running the uh, staunch response. 
now that we know he's running the turn timbers with how the deck count is, um, I'm struggling to see how Josh is going to be able to push through in this match. But if there's anybody well, push can through do is it, a good card that gives dominate. <laughs> <laughs> if, if there's anybody that can do it, Josh is Josh is the one that can do it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Quinn coming in with uh, another normal evergreen for seven. No regular regular. Regular regular. These are starting to represent two cards out of Josh's hand if he wants to block. So that, uh, that's becoming a very relevant thing. Yeah, that's a two for one trade. And we can also notice that uh, Dynamos have been uh, sitting over there in the corner, not doing anything for about four or five turns now. Yeah, I think they've blocked yeah. two this game. Two or three. What happened to your counter? Yeah, I, I lost it. <laughs> <laughs> I lost it when uh, it's been 15 minutes since they, uh, since they activated. I've been too busy predicting Oak and Olds and Shunts. You've been soul reading your opponents. That's it. They're not even my opponents, and I still do it. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've, we've seen Josh play enough where we're like, hmm. Right. Yep. <laughs> One card left in his hand. It's just going into the arsenal. Not many people can play on an efficiency level with uh, Crown of Seeds and Rampart on the other side of the table. Mm -hmm. Too efficient at blocking. Yeah, For those that don't just know. removing. Yep, go ahead. Two car or I was just gonna say, uh, removing two damage basically every turn um, for pitching cards that don't go away. It's it keeps the deck healthy. Oh and here we see the remaining two Iron Song determinations. So and Josh is out of those right now. He would rather have used a three block there than he only prevented one damage with one of those cards. So what was the what was the the theory behind instead of just using the iron song determination here for free for plus one uh, damage? I don't have a clue because he even used the tunic counter to swing, so he could have taken the one damage, pitched the card. Yeah, that's a good point. I have no idea. The only thing is, right? So one thing he has to balance in his deck right now when he starts getting low on cards is he needs to like have a good ratio between blues and like pump cards like warriors valor spoils things like that so maybe he, he's trying to get out the fluff essentially right because right. what good is what good is iron song determination if you don't pump it with anything right yep the big thing though using the tunic counter basically admits that he doesn't have a shunt Mm -hmm. This just yeah, iron damage response here. here. Nothing visible to oh, give no again. No. Yet. Oh. My goodness gracious. I think Josh is going to be happy with that trade though. Um, trading an iron song for an entire turn timber. Uh, not when you're not when you're uh, twenty cards behind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Josh down to 21 cards in deck to uh, Quinn's 38. Yeah, 17 now. So in two turns, Quinn's got a four-card lead. So he's averaging yeah, at a two-card lead in every turn. Yeah, at this point, though, uh, we are definitely getting to that second cycle for Josh uh, coming up soon. So those Glint the Quicksilver is showing up. That uh, Steel Blade Supremacy is going to come back. Yep. Somebody in chat pointing out something. Uh, I think the biggest gauge to who's winning the game, they say, uh, is when you look at the heroes on the table. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. <laughs> okay, Ooh. that's pretty good. That's pretty good. This is very so, spicy. So, so now, now, do you think that Josh was happy with that turn timber uh, out of the way? I think uh... so. I think he's happy with getting the turn timber out with the Iron Song response. But what if he yeah, played it because there's another one in Arsenal? There's nothing in Arsenal well, we know, right now. We know we've seen two turn timbers and I believe two staunch responses. So uh, yep. likely one of each left. Well, if that rampart goes forward, then we know he doesn't have it. 
well, this is probably one of the last big turns he's going to have that's like yeah, Josh very, very powerful. He's, he's got to make this one count. But I think Quinn knows that he just has to lay his whole hand down here. Um, if, you know, if he doesn't. Yeah, he needs to block 10 here. If I'm if I'm the Starvo and I have ten block, I'm putting ten block in front of this because he's representing seven. Um, the only thing that gets over that is an overpower, and the, um, the likelihood that he has blue card plus overpower in hand here not likely. Um, you could easily put rampart legs two three blocks. I believe that's. I believe that's enough. All right, so he does. Yeah, we are seeing the shield and the legs and, and two, three, two three blocks. blocks. Now, is this the uh, third crippling crush or the second? Second, I believe. Could be third, though. I'm not sure. Right. I'm predicting things, Nathan. Tell you what. Tell you what. And then just nothing. So. Gosh. So it seems like Josh built this Dory deck based off of like, okay, if you don't want to block me, then you're just going to die. But now He's Quinn's like, blocked. okay, I'll block. <laughs> <laughs> He's very, very happy to block. Because he's only yeah, yeah, that... one dumb. Imagine if Josh. It's one of those things there. about Starvo. Oh, route would have been amazing. We haven't seen a route yet, though. Nope. He's already cycled through, I think. Uh, fairly certain he should be on second cycle now. With 19 cards left in deck. This is not going in Josh's favor at the moment. Starva able to keep up the pressure. Just yeah, enough. that's one of the advan That's one of the advantages of uh, Starvo. Uh, on top of having this enormous card pool, the ability to dominate and give go again to whatever, to whatever. Um, he has really the option of being a very aggressive deck or a defensive deck. Uh, so he can choose basically depending on the matchup whether he wants to do a blocky strategy like we're seeing here or one that leans more aggressive and holds on to those pulses. Yeah, Starvo is a very resilient deck because it has the ability to play Crown of Seeds plus a shield. Um, so, like, a lot of times you'll see, like, in Viscerai versus Bravo matches where the Viscerai gets the Starvo to seven or less life, and then they have to spend seven turns or six turns trying to kill them uh, because they're so efficient at blocking. Mm -hmm. Here we have the Yellow Warrior's Valor. That's the main reason that Starvo is going to get suspended on May 2nd. Amen. <laughs> the fact hey, that they made a whole or, category just for him. Or or, or Crown of Seeds is going to get suspended. One or the other. Yeah, I do like the idea, though. I think the Fab 2.0 of being able to suspend a card is pretty neat. And it kind of allows them to just, like, shake things up on a whim and really allow people to, like, start exploring things. It's really good. Yeah, so for for the viewers who haven't seen the announcement, what is the difference between the suspension and the bans and all of that? What can the Legend Story Studios do now with this? Yeah, so the ban restricted announcement came out, or the, the 2.0 that falls under it is basically allows LSS to suspend a card, which at time of suspension, they are required to list a date threshold of when the suspension is. So they could say, okay, for the weekend of the Pro Tour, nobody can play Starvo, right? Or, but now they said that they're going to mainly use it for the Blitz format um, to really shake things up for like each skirmish season. Um, however, they did say that they are not just limited to Blitz format. Yeah, so definitely something that we could see uh, with Bravo Star of the Show, especially with this Pro Tour coming up. Absolutely. You think there's a reason that Josh, uh, did he just want that blue out for blood out of his deck? Because he knew that his opponent was going to crown a seeds to block the, yes, the remaining he, damage. So yep. I'm assuming he did that just to get it out of his deck. Yep. 
He's getting to the point to where he's going to start having a blue problem. <laughs> In my opinion, six is a better break point than seven right now in the in uh this this strategy because of the rampart plus crown representing two block. I think six is where you want to be to get two cards out of your opponent. But this is the last Red Warriors Valor. Unless it's followed up with something else in the hand there, then just gonna keep getting blocked. Oh, oh. there's the last staunch. Oh yikes. From Arsenal All too. Right. So this is this is not getting not getting through yeah i think we've seen uh one or two iron song determinations so josh probably, probably one of those coming up soon or not determination sorry response uh if that reprise ends up getting in uh, somebody in chat says they could also suspend until a condition is met um for example if they could ban a card until a hero living legends out and then it would the card would come back so like that for would instance, certainly be interesting for instance, they could suspend Crown of Seeds until Starvo Living Legends out. It's interesting. Another Steel Blade yeah. shot. About the only way that he's done damage this game. <laughs> so oh, with, the, of them. with the ability to suspend cards, I think that the most important thing is like the frequency, right? Um, I don't know if it almost feels like if it changes too often, it could be like a just a hindrance and require too much from the players to keep up. Um, but if they seldomly do it, I, I think it's I think it's a very big positive. If you look at a game like Yu-Gi-Oh, their ban restricted limited list is a mile long, and they're still going strong. So um, I'm not saying they're doing it correctly. I'm just saying that it can be done. <laughs> um, but yeah, it is it is a problem when you have a lot to keep track of on the on the ban list. Games definitely want to try to survive with minimal minimal uh touching of their own cards after they print them. Yeah, we're seeing Quinn pitch his uh, awakening again, looking at the life totals, he's probably not anticipating using it anytime soon. And there it looks like we do have that iron song response. I believe that's the third one. I believe so. Just coming in for seven. Get another sword swing for the first time in a year. Uh, will he remember his dynamo counter? Because <laughs> it's been so long. <laughs> it's been oh, so long. He's been waiting for that. Blocking for five, so three block wood. He won't there forget. There, yeah. yeah. He's very happy to get that counter off. He's he's getting that life. Uh, yeah, there goes, just there looking goes. at the deck totals. Yep, he we knows got what's 12 happening. Twelve cards to thirty-one. Yep. The the efficiency of Crown of Saints and Rampart yeah. is just <laughs> mind-boggling. Thirty-one yes. cards to twelve cards in deck. It is mind-boggling. Oh, this card doesn't block. I'll oh, block for two. <laughs> and filter. And filter. Yeah. So. Oh, I'm so just... good. I'm no scientist, but uh, I think this one is over. I don't see any way for Josh. I'm not even sure if you counted up all the red cards in his deck that it would equal 17 damage. Right. Gone through all of his sink belows, so he's I'm pretty sure he's almost out of defense reactions. He's probably got um, two like shunts a, like in a hand. Shunt. And a... <laughs> <laughs> I got blue shunts left. There's the heart coming back around to gain him some life. Coming in for three. I was hearing somebody talk about like the flavor surrounding like uh, Living Legend for for Bravo. Like he he was supposed to be the star of the show. Is not like he was supposed to be busted? No. Um, no. It was like he was always intended to be the first Living Legend. That's what they were saying. Yeah. 
I think mistakes were made. <laughs> I would tend to agree. All right, we are seeing that blue over power coming in. What is this? What does a blue one do? Is it plus? Plus four if her prize is active. Okay. Yeah, which uh, it is. It definitely is. Yep. So he took four, coming in for uh, what four on the backside? Yep. Which all of it will get blocked here. And if it doesn't, what does that mean? Okanold. <laughs> yeah, we've seen two Okanolds, so there is that third one. I don't think Got he's going to get Okanolded uh, after having blocked with the green card, because I don't think we've cycled back to the pulse yet. But if... Uh, yep. <clears throat> that makes more sense. So Icy Hammer Arsenal. Got it. Yep. You, you, we've seen this before. Yeah, once or twice. <laughs> yep. Pretty Ooh, much no. all his opponent has to do for the rest of this game. It does Josh want to get those dynamos a counter again? <laughs> this might be the last time they get used this game. I think he's got one more glint left. Nathan, um, we have not hit a good matchup for us this evening, have we? Um, our first Starvo into what did Nam play against? Briar. It was a Briar. Oh, no. Yeah. For Starvo into <laughs> and Alexi's definitely not favorable. Yeah, it was a Viserai and Alexi. Uh, Prism into Viscerai and now Starvo into Dorinthia. Uh, yeah, but I mean, Josh knew that he was unfavored when he walked in. No matter what, <laughs> no matter what flicked over. <laughs> <laughs> I think he enjoys the uh, unfavorability. Gives him more bragging rights when he wins. Wait, hold on. Is this gonna? If Josh loses this, is this his first loss in the league? It is. It'll be his first loss in the league. I just realized that. From from both seasons. Yep. Yeah, for both seasons. Because last, uh, last season he got the MVP because he went un undefeated. Yeah. Josh and gives up. Looks like and that's a concession. concession. That yep. is a concession. He drew, the, he drew the four blue hand and knew it was over. Yeah. All right, so here uh, we have Quinn Wonkyu beating uh, Josh Lau. Uh, this uh, makes the record right now three to one for the Hyperloops. There is another game uh, this weekend. I believe it's Saturday between uh, Joe and Sebastian, and that will be uh, a bit fun because both of them ended up top eight, top eight at the calling in Vegas, I believe. Um, yep. Anyway, uh, it was great uh, having you all here together on our streams. I really enjoyed being able to uh, stream with you all. It was great having all four of these games. And to the viewers, uh, I'm just going to thank you all for watching. Uh, I'm going to end my stream now. You can probably stick around with the card guys for a little longer on their channel. Link in the description if you want to hear uh, them talk about the day. So thanks, thanks everybody for watching. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank Happy you. to have you on with us, Andy. Yeah, no, th this was uh, this was really fun. Um, I just sure. ended my stream, but yeah, next time, uh, I, I mean, I guess if if we see you in the playoff or season two, three or whatever, uh, I've definitely been enjoying the streaming, and it's always more fun to have people from uh, both teams on the stream. Just having two people from the same team, it tends to get a bit one-sided. For sure, for sure. All right, well, have a good evening to all of you. I'm gonna hop off now. All right, have a good night. Have a good night. Right. Well, today has not been a good day of flesh and blood, but it's okay because it's all for bragging rights, you know. That's are we still live? We are still live, but you know it. Uh. All right. Well, I yeah. gotta head off, but you know, for sure. Don't don't. don't
don't forget to remind Josh how bad Slice and Dice is. I will. I'll let him know that you said Slice and Dice yeah. is the first card to get cut. No yep. exceptions. I'll let him know. That's it. Thanks. You <laughs> got to take it easy. Slicing and no dicing. <laughs> All right, stream, well, we're gonna, card um, right from the deck. We're going to go ahead and end the stream as well. We appreciate you guys chilling out with us tonight. Um, if you guys wouldn't mind uh, clicking subscribe if you haven't subscribed, if you haven't and you've been watching this whole time what are you doing wow um and uh that's about it check out our patreon because patreon heck yeah andy's actually one of our pa patrons so shout out to andy for that as well hi um but, uh, hey josh hey josh yes All we, we want we, nothing they, of the dice um uh, yeah nathan wanted to let you know that uh slice and dice needs to come out of that deck he, left. he was like, tell him slice and dice is bad. Bye. And he, he left. Okay.